wrestling fans, it's very hard to explain this Monday Night Raw. It's very hard. Because on one hand, I really like the direction that they are going. Hell in the Cell seems like, as of right now, with the two matches that they have announced and how it's being built, like, it's going to be an okay pay-per-view. I am genuinely okay with the two Hell in a Cell matches that we are going to get at Hell in a Cell. WWE, I genuinely think, is backing themselves up into a corner. WWE, for the second time ever, are putting women inside Hell in a Cell. I don't care uh, about it because Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch are in there and they deserve this matchup. The rivalry deserves it. So I'm not going to gripe about it. When you look at all the rivalries WWE has right now, the most violent one is Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch. Outside of Eric Rowan and Roman Reigns. And I'm not so sure they're going to do anything else. we we'll have to wait and see tomorrow night. As far as Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins. WWE's backing themselves into a corner. WWE, with how they are booking this build... With how this build to hell in the cell is, it, it, it can only go one way. It can only go one way. And that's with the thing walking out of hell in a cell, your new universal champion. Can only go one way in three weeks. Wrestling fans, with all of these Firefly Funhouse promos by Bray Wyatt telling everybody, but everybody, see you in hell, bye! Telling Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman, whoever wins, see you in hell, bye! And then tonight, taking Kane, of all people, the big red monster. I understand they were in Tennessee. Of course, he's going to show up. All right, wrestling fans? Shows up as the big red demon. Who better to take the hell than Cain? And then the close up shot of, of Bray Wyatt the Fiend crawling over towards Seth Rollins who was hurled up in the corner beaten and battered because of what the OC did. You mean to tell me WWE is going to take all of this and flush it down the toilet. If they do that, everything about The Fiend will be a waste of time. Everything about this character will be a waste of time. Because Seth Rollins does not need to beat Ray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt needs to beat Seth Rollins. <sighs> speaking of beating. Speaking of. Needing a win. Needing to. Uh, 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 
get some, you know, a boost under his belt and shoot to the sky in a rivalry. That's Al- that's Cedric Alexander. You know, I get that uh, AJ Styles needs to look dominant as a champion. Things of that nature. And that's fine. That's great. That's grand. That's fantastic. Wrestling fans. He can still look that way in a build. He can still come out, attack Cedric Alexander from behind, do a phenomenal forearm, which I genuinely enjoyed his phenomenal forearm tonight. That absolutely made Cedric Alexander do a 360 at the end of that six-man tag. I'm still trying to figure out why WWE has, uh, you know, the Viking Raiders as uh, baby faces, but that's a different story. The, the, the point is, Cedric Alexander, who is supposed to get this push right now, is getting beaten and battered left and right. AJ Styles can still look strong, can still look dominant by attacking Cedric Alexander and things like that in the rivalry. Cedric Alexander can be in a matchup, win, and then Styles attack him and do what he's doing after the matchup. Why can't you have something like that? You're never going to get anybody to believe in Cedric Alexander with AJ Styles doing what he did tonight and what he did last night. I'm sorry. The sympathy card is not going to work with Cedric Alexander. Not for me. Y'all let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. It's, it's just not. The King of the Ring tournament is finally over, and I couldn't be happier. I'm telling you, I am the happiest wrestling fan WWE has, probably, about that tournament being over with. And I never thought I'd say that, because I've been watching... I've watched every single King of the Ring tournament that WWE has produced since 1993. Since the first paper, King of the Ring pay-per-view was made. And I'm going to tell you, this wasn't the worst, but this was... One of the worst King of the Ring final matchups that I've ever seen. I'm just going to be right out. And, and the fact that we have Baron Corbin as the King of the Ring. And we have to see him on either Monday Night Raw or soon to be Friday Night Smackdown. What on earth are you doing? Seriously. I understand WWE likes to make uh, king uh, heels kings most of the time. But, Baron Corbin is one of the biggest get off my TV uh, superstars WWE has today. And that's not just coming from me. You can tell by the heat that he gets from the fans. Kane, 24-7 champion. Uh, I guess uh, politicians even get to be 24-7 champion in the WWE. I mean, I understand, uh, you know, Kane being the politician. I mean, 
still under WWE contract, and of course, you know, everything that Kane has done with the company. But, he's 24-7 champion, and of course, R-Truth recaptured the championship later on in the segment. Braun Strowman wiped out SmackDown Live Tag Team Champions and the Raw Tag Team Champions. Who cares? Uh, let's see. The biggest disappointment tonight, outside of Michael Cole telling us that he... The women's matchup between Lacey Evans and the woman who's been on a roll as of late, Dana Brooke, you know, was just so great. And, and she put just such an effort. She sure did, Michael Cole. You really hyped up Dana Brooke, that, that matchup. WWE, before you have one of your color commentators go out and start hyping up a superstar, don't you think you might want to uh, roll back the clock, look at your scripts from weeks past, and see how many weeks they've actually been on TV as of late. And, and done something inside the squared circle. How many times has Dana Brooke really been on TV? That's my question. Y'all let me know in the comments below. Rey Mysterio versus Cesaro. Good contest. Wouldn't mind seeing a rivalry out of this. Cesaro would put on some great contests for us. Rey Mysterio and Cesaro, I wouldn't mind seeing on pay-per-view, on the network, on these shows, Hell in a Cell, Survivor Series, things like that. Not just Monday Night Raw. Can't have just these shows... You can't just have these matches where they're on just either Raw or SmackDown. You can't. It's just making it where it makes it look like it's just filler nothing matches. They don't mean anything. Because we're just going to save the titles for the pay-per-views. Use some of this on the pay-per-view and don't defend every championship every month. Just do that. It's okay. We don't have to see the Women's Tag Team Championship defended at the pay-per-view every month. You can defend it on Raw or SmackDown. Since how there's that one month contract clause that WWE does uh, sometimes lets us know about and sometimes they say, oh, it's okay. Forget about it. Keep that in mind, wrestling fans, when, when, when it comes to championships. But, really, like Rey Mysterio and Cesaro or, or Andrade versus you know, Ali, or, or whoever. Any type of pair of, uh, of matchups that we have seen in the past, as of late, would be great. Speaking of the Women's Tag Team Championships, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross took on Bailey and Sasha Banks tonight. And the biggest thing I had to say about this is Nikki Cross is really starting to shine. WWE is really starting to push her 
as far as shining in the uh, women's division. And I like it. Now, I, 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 I like the fact that, uh, you know, Alexa Bliss is still there kind of helping her get that TV exposure. Because, quite frankly, wrestling fans, without Alexa Bliss being there by her side, Nikki, Nikki Cross would not, not be on TV. Every single one of us knows that. But, Nikki Cross is shining. I like what she's doing inside Squared Circle. But, this was nothing more than to uh, put up, set up, the Hell in a Cell matchup for next month. And of course, Seth Rollins versus Robert Roode, in which it ended in a disqualification matchup, in which then all hell broke loose with the OC and the tag team champions, and then Kane, and then Bray Wyatt all coming down, and, and, and everything, and, and Seth Rollins just laid out in a corner. With Ray Wyatt in his face. And the last image that we saw. The Monday Night Raw. Was. We're really glad that you're our friends. And this is the friendship that will never ever end. And it went back and forth. And it was all mixed up. And it was all. It, it wasn't the normal song that we usually here. I liked it. Can't wait to see what happens next. And I hope they make the right decision and give Bray Wyatt the Universal Championship at hell in a cell. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. See you tomorrow night for Smack Down live review and until i see you again this is webby and i'll catch you on the other side talk to you later